Have we had a lot of horror movies I can't this even year? Think of the last good horror movie I saw um, that wasn't made in the eighties or seventies. We had The Witch. It follows. Oh, The Witch this year. We Witch had The Witch really this good. year. We had uh, The Witch is really good. We oh, saw The Darkness. Darkness. <laughs> First, I'm gonna say mainstream horror movie. First, really good mainstream horror movie, and of course, it's a James Wan film. Yeah, guys, we went to go see Conjuring and get. And spoiler alert, it's really good. It's every scary. Fam white family in a haunted house movie, but the great exactly. thing about James Wan is that he's such a good director that even though this movie is everything I've seen before, I love it. Like, it's so well done. But it's not even everything you've seen before. It takes what you think it's gonna do and does something else. No, and he does that within the movie. In Scare 1, he does it one way. In Scare 2, he starts it off that way, but then goes to something completely different. In Scare 3, he does 1 and 2, and then he plays around a little bit, and then he does Scare like, 3. You get ready to roll your eyes because you're like, oh, I've seen this before, but you haven't. What I thought about this film with the, the, with the scary moments or the creepy moments is that there wasn't jump scares. Oh, there were jump scares to I the mean, mile. I mean, there the, were jump scares. The, the, the good, scary, creepy scenes, there were not jump scares. Like... Oh, the really intense Yeah, the, re building. the really yeah. intense... Like the that. stuff that a horror yeah. movie should have. We are going to talk about minor spoilers. We're not going to give you major spoilers because we do believe that you should go out and watch this film and enjoy it the way it should be, spoiler free. Takes place, does it specifically say how many years after the first movie this takes place? Doesn't it say on the same time frame? It's, it's... It's in the 70s for it's sure. It's 1977. Okay, I don't the remember Amity, the first the one. The Amityville scene at the beginning of the film was in 72. So, after we can argue that one. five or so years. All right, so five or so years after the first one, uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren, the para, the paranormal, I guess, detectives, spirits, investigators, investigators, paranormal investigators. They get called to London to investigate this um, this phenomenon involving a family in Enfield, England, and uh, specifically this 11-year-old girl named Janet who has unfortunately become the victim of sort of like these demons or spirits or apparitions, whatever they may be. Was I not cool. the only one who, whenever the ghost started going, Bill, 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 I Bill, Bill Nye the science guy, Bill, 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 Bill. It's a single mother, it's the older sister, the, the younger sister. Well, no, the older... I'm going in order of age. Oh, okay. Because it's like the mom, the older sister, Janet, the one who ends up being ultimately possessed. Joey? Billy? Joey! Johnny. Yes, Joey! Johnny! Johnny? Or Joey? It was Johnny. It was Johnny. It was Johnny. Oh, and okay. then Billy. Like because you couldn't forget Billy's name because every time Billy did something stupid in this movie everybody in the audience was like Billy don't do it Billy I wanted a biscuit where's the b biscuits oh, oh, oh. poor little stuttering kid the, 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 the day junior <laughs> they're fighting about bringing their chilies in I mean I've seen people walk in with full-on Panda Express. Really? Yeah, like That's holding the bag and just walking in. I've seen. <gasps> I have candy. Sorry. I've seen a troop. <laughs> I have candy. No, I've seen a troop of Mexican kids come in from the gas station, seven in a row, just carrying all the stuff they bought. There's this tiny two-year-old holding a Doritos bag that is bigger than she is. Aww. Now we understand why the prices of concessions are so high. Oh, it's no. because of those Mexican... That girl's car smells really good. Okay. When does a doctor get mad? Come on, this is easy. Uh, I don't know when. When he runs out of patience. <laughs> I'm gonna be speaking a lot in this movie about James Wan because I think he's the puppet master of this film. Don't I'm pretty sure I'll appreciate that reference. Um, no, but 
throughout this movie, I was thinking of two guys, and I was thinking William Castle and John Carpenter. John Carpenter should be familiar to most horror fans. He directed my favorite horror movie of all time, Halloween, mm -hmm. and The Thing, and one of the greatest... The remake of The Thing. The remake of The Thing, the first remake, the best one. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the masters of suspense. He's one of just the greatest directors ever made. Guillermo del Toro talks about John Carpenter. He references The Thing and he says, it's like John Carpenter has it mathematically planned out in his head to get you when you're not expecting it. You don't follow the music, you don't really have a certain way of doing things, and he'll surprise you by catching you off guard. Just like that scene in The Thing, whenever they're trying to do the, the clear things on that one guy, and it just goes through and like giant teeth get the guy's hand. If you study that, and if you study, you know, how horror movies time the music nowadays, or even back then, they would time the music, or the way they would kind of give away when the scare is going to happen, you can tell that in Juan's films and in Carpenter's films that he's constantly trying to catch you off guard. And William Castle, who was a director of kind of like really cheesy, fun schlock, like House on Haunted Hill, mm -hmm. which is totally like the precursor to Scooby-Doo mm -hmm. and all those. Like, this is the guy that in theaters he said okay i want y'all to hang a skeleton from the roof and whenever this scene happens <laughs> cut the cord and let the skeleton dangle above the audience like oh, man. he's credited with turning the theater into a fun house oh. and i honestly find james wan as like this great marriage of the two conjuring 2 it was in my opinion it had those creepy scary moments when you could tell it was coming Lorraine is at her house and she starts following this demon and it just so happens that her husband you know had a you know a dream and he so you know he couldn't get out of his head so he painted it and it was basically the top of this nun looking demon and um so he hung it on the wall in his office the guy hunts ghosts for a living yeah and he wakes up and he draws some like and creepy he ass think shit that's weird than the least bit yeah that's I know. Kinda... he was like, <laughs> like oh, no, you like my art i was inspired by my dream <laughs> is it pretty <laughs> the rain the rain i know we had demons and ghosts for a living but <laughs> why know... are you backing away i really think this one speaks to me <laughs> yeah. it, it, it spoke to me last night in my dream <laughs> <laughs> later in that scene you know the the background of this painting almost it just it's just the like a a few shades off from the color of the wall so whenever you know you see the painting in this room it it almost looks like it's just literally the demon standing there but it's not the door closes on the rain while she's in ed's office and she she's like freaking out freaking out you know she she knows something's going on of course but she just doesn't know what and then the shutters close and then you just see the shadow of obviously the demon just circling the room and Lorraine's following it and then it finally goes against the wall that the painting is on and it's there and it stands mirror like to the painting where you know you can tell the shadows there but like torso up you can tell that's exactly where it is and then you just see these fingers creep against or creep on the uh creep around the painting and it's like dude that's fucking creepy that shadow was something straight out of nosferatu man like whenever you see nosferatu's shadow climb up the stairs that's classic just mm -hmm. i don't know why that gets under your under your skin so well but it does just because you know there's something there but there isn't anything there the thing that I can really laud Juan and his films on is the characters. Like, there's so many movies where the characters in horror movies are just garbage. Yeah, it's not a really good story for it's so movie. cynically approached. They say, 
They think we go to horror movies to watch people just get mindlessly slaughtered. Sometimes. And so what happens... Sometimes. Sometimes you do, but the problem, the risk you run is that if you make your characters unlikable, I've got to sit through some bullshit. I've still got to sit through 30 minutes of this jackass before he finally dies. Era Farmiga as Lorraine Warren, I thought she brings so much life to this character that I honestly couldn't imagine anybody doing it except for her. There's so much fear, there's so much vulnerability, there's so much just tenacity in that character, and she's fascinating. She doesn't overact either. No. She does it so much with so little, and this is the movie that made me love uh, Farmiga as an actress. I thought the ending was pretty sappy for what it was, you know, hey, the good guys win, and that was, uh, that was pretty much the ending. And, you know, it felt like just another rehash ending of a, another movie. An example of too much ambition. The idea that there's way too many plot threads hanging in and we're going to try to explain it all at once when, in reality, I think the film could have been a lot better had you just stuck to your, you know, ghost story and your talents as, uh, as someone who scares and as someone who gets you interested in the characters. None of these lows should take away from the fact that The Conjuring 2 is one of the better horror sequel movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the better movies I've seen this year. Definitely. And the more and more I talk about it, the more and more I'm finding myself willing to forgive the ending. Because in a... Because I've seen so many horror movies that don't even try. That barely put in the amount of effort that this thing does. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 6. Five out of six. Enjoyed the fuck out of this. I enjoyed the fuck out of this as well. <laughs> it was I was very entertained throughout the entire film. Unfortunately, the ending it was very lackluster for me. It like I said in my low, it just felt straight out of something else and it didn't feel like it was really unique. Mm. And that is the only reason why I'm not giving this a 6 out of 6, because unfortunately James Wan does not know how to get the knockout blow in the film. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 6. You almost scared the shit out of me. Like, I thought you were going to go under 5, and I was like, really? <laughs> oh no, don't you dare fucking do it. I really liked it too. Really, really liked it. That being said... I feel like a five is not enough, but a five and a half is too much. Can I do like five and a quarter? No. We're not about to fuck up my rating system more than it I, already gets fucked. <laughs> a little edge of the star? No. Okay. Five. Five. It's really good. Guess what? No. Half cock verdict. The most positive verdict we've had amongst everybody. <laughs> Five out of six. That's pretty We impressive. enjoyed the shit out of it. We, actually agree. we wow. give it the half cocked uh, seal of approval. Ow. Spend your money. Come out and uh buy popcorn, buy your ticket, buy your drink, buy your nachos, buy your hot dog, give buy your boiled this peanuts. This movie your business. We need more horror movies that are willing to put in the extra work. This needs to be a hit. Even if you disagreed with our opinion and you like the way we went about doing this, if you like this video general, just press the like button. We've also got the subscribe button there. You'll be the first to know whenever new videos are released. I'm currently planning a new episodes in five minutes or less for The Lobster, this big crazy hit out of con. Spoiler alert, I like that one too. That'll be up in the next couple of days. Bitchin'. If you've seen The Conjuring 2, and please, just let us know what you thought. If you think we're full of shit, tell us we're full of shit. If you liked it, well, hey, spread the love. Maybe I'll talk some extra spoilers in the comment section. Next week, I know, is Finding Dory. Finally get that Finding Dory on my birthday weekend. Hell yes! Finding Dory, and I think Central Intelligence comes out in the U.S. on the 17th. I know it comes out for that differently and other parts of the world. I love The Rock. But uh, I think he's going to be great in that film. Oh yeah, dude, The Rock is The Rock has been amazing the past couple of years. But uh anyway, for more breaking movie news, follow Half Cocked on Facebook and Twitter. Those links are in the description below. And as always, y'all take care. Have a good night and peace out motherfuckers.